<laughs> hey folks, and welcome to another exciting episode of Bridging the Gap. Uh, I'm your host, John Morris, the artist, the psychologist in training, and among many other things that are there, we want to welcome you to the show that is for teens and parents that examines, explores, and gives you guys a step-by-step -step guidance on how you can overcome a lot of the issues that teens and parents are facing in, obviously, our modern day life and all the other stuff that's going on. So before I go any further, I want to welcome my awesome co-host, the artist, the skincare specialist, and the lady of many talents, Alicia Madonna. How are you doing today? Hi, everybody. I am doing great. Just got what? back from a nice weekend away, so I'm, I'm doing good. Good. What's been going on aside from your, your weekend uh, away? What's been going on with you this past week? Oh, my gosh, everything. Um, I've been trying to figure out a new schedule, starting a new job, doing a whole bunch of freelance work. So I've been here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> I hear you on that, yes. I hear you on that for sure. And uh, whenever, <laughs> whenever you're changing things around, you know, all that transitional phases we spoke about last week, there is so much, so, so much. So. Yeah. I feel like I am starting to go more into the, you know, unplug, replug phase of it all. Thank Good. goodness. Starting to feel a little bit better. This weekend really helped a whole bunch, but I, I definitely think there's still a little bit left of the transition phase you're going to go through, but I'm I, getting yeah. feeling better. Well, that's good. And that, yeah, I absolutely hear. We're going to be talking about that later on, folks, about uh, the importance of taking time out and uh, it, it is vital. But I want to share with you guys almost like a brand new segment to this show, maybe, maybe for this show specifically or this episode specifically, um, called the news section, because... Alicia and I have talked a little bit off air about some of the political things that are going on, some of the things that are going on in schools and stuff. And there was one that really caught my attention this past week. And um, it's basically the best way I can label it is a minister, uh, as in a, a reverend, a, a priest, whatever you want to call him, has been unfairly dismissed for speaking out against uh, LGBT ideology and basically giving well, his sermon basically said, you know, just because somebody says it doesn't mean you have to agree with it. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up, Alicia, have you heard about this? I have not. No. Okay, well, well, buckle your seatbelt because this is, it's its literally, it's, the reason that I'm bringing this up, guys, is because it is an, in, an insight to where our governments are going, our school system is going, so much is going. Okay, so, and, and just before, you know, before we get started, because I know I'm going to get some, you know, rap if I don't say this. The first thing is, I personally am not against the LGBT movement. The second thing is, on this show, we deal with facts and not rumors. So everything here has been reported by uh, media, has been reported by papers, and has obviously the verification uh, to back it up. So... Uh, this past week, a matter re-arose that originated in 2018, and it was a reverend, the Reverend Bernard, uh, da, da, da. Uh, the, yeah, Bernard Randall, there we go, uh, who was chaplain at Trent College in Nottingham, and he, del he delivered a sermon. And in his sermon, he told the pupils, you do not have to accept the ideas and ideologists of the LGBT activists, because certainly over here, and I don't know what it's like for you guys in the States, but certainly over here, a lot of the teenagers either that my wife works with or that I speak to or that we work with and whatever we do, you know, they seem to feel that the LGBT stuff is like the new religion that's been taught in the schools. And it's a case of if you don't accept it, there is something severely wrong with you. Is it, what, what's it like in the States? Do you know? Um, it's, it's kind of like that too. You know, there's this um, idea that, yeah, if you're not accepting it, then you're basically a bad person and yep. you're shunned away, which I have thoughts and feelings on the whole thing, but I I'm definitely on the side of if we can't agree, mm -hmm. then just agree to disagree. Yep. You know, there, there shouldn't be a conflict if you can't agree, yep. you know, just be okay with it. So, yep. but it's definitely the same climate over here. I think. Okay. That's interesting. And I, and I was saying to Alicia off, uh, I think next week, cause we've been talking about this. I think we're going to do the show about the LGBT, um, teaching in schools. Um, personally, I feel it should not be taught in schools. I feel especially primary schools. And again, I've done a ton of research already that's there prior to this show, um, because the psychologist at Yale University, believe it or not, where I've been studying their online platform, has done extensive research into why people are attracted to each other, uh, which is a topic for another time. But I want you you guys to know, like I said, that we present the, the facts, not just, you know, uh, hearsay kind of stuff. Um, 
but to get back to the point, you know, the, the mission statement of this um, college in, in Trent College was to educate boys and girls according to the Protestant and evangelical principles of the Church of England. Now, the, the sermon was delivered, believe it or not, in 2018 after the school began working with the charity Educate and Celebrate, uh, which provides LGBTI plus inclusion um, training in schools offering to embed gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, and the fabric of the organization. And Dr. Randall apparently said that he was excluded from any discussions about the implementation of the charity's program after raising concerns about it. So he's already, you know, in, in, you know, in June 2018, he's already been told, you know, well, you may have opposing views, but this is the direction we're going in. You can't, you know, uh, uh, you know speak out against it. Um, but the story goes on because after the sermon was reported, uh, he was actually reported to the police under the PREVENT program. Now, I need to look into that a little bit more just to see, obviously, all the details and things. No action was taken against him. The headmaster then began causing trouble. And then he was actually given a con or, or a list of conditions which, which his future sermons um, had to meet and was told you will not publicly express or personal beliefs in ways that exploit our pupils' vulnerability, to which I've got the, the feeling of, and I don't know about your feeling about this, Alicia, you can tell I'm already getting fired up about this, because, you know, people are saying, well, which side am I on? I'm on the side of right, okay, because I, if, if free speech is there, and we're meant to have free speech, then to say, you know, you don't have to accept this, um, and then to be deemed, he actually ends up getting deemed as a terrorist. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but it, it, it's, to me, it's ludicrous because over here in the UK, you look around the school system now, there are very few teachers over a certain age. Most teachers are like 20s or 30s that have been bred in a certain way, taught in a certain way, think in a certain way. What do you think about this happening? Uh, you know, that you're not allowed to express your personal beliefs, but yet teachers seem to be able to, as long as it coincides with, you know, the LGBT ideologies that the school and the government seem to want to influence with. So I don't know how much here in the States, um, primary school teachers yeah. are kind of inundated with that and talking about it, because I know... I know that at least for, for New York State, yeah. where I am, um, our education guidelines are insane. They're okay. through the roofs. I mean, we have, I have tons of friends that went through an education program and they are, they have like strict guidelines of what right. they can and cannot do. So I don't really know how much of that is happening here. Um, I definitely am on the side of free speech, mm -hmm. you know, state your opinion. I think what we need to do more of <clears throat> in the primary schools and the elementary schools is teaching more of acceptance mm -hmm. and you know understanding and listening to the other person's yeah. side i feel like a lot of times it is this this is right this is wrong that's how you have to mm -hmm. be and that's ingrained in us so so young that by the time we get older you kind of can't train it yeah. out of us so i think my personal belief is that in primary schools we really need to teach we need to teach more like emotional education, yeah. how to deal with our emotions, how to deal with other people's emotions, how to handle certain real life situations. I do believe we should have LGBTQ education, but I think it should be later on yeah. when we're a little bit older, um, like it, maybe high school. Mm -hmm. middle school, high school, when we're a little bit more developed, we have a little bit more of understanding, maybe even college. Um, but I do think that we need to have an understanding of it. Yeah. But I do believe that sometimes so young, you're so impressionable. There's yeah. so many things going on coming at you that I just think that we need to kind of strip away so much and really boil down to the basics when we're, when our kids are young you know, really basic, emotional, because I just, I feel like so many, I know I was one of those kids that came out kind of emotionally unprepared yes. for life. I mean, this is the whole reason why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think that we need a lot more emotional education mm -hmm. early on. I mean, we're going to be talking about that later on uh, with emotional intelligence, which folks, if you've never heard of this before, again, you, I think it's going to be something that you're going to enjoy because hopefully it'll be life changing for a lot of people. Um, but I think the thing that really concerned me the most was the, 
the view maybe of the government and the educational board that was almost like, if you don't toe our party line, if you don't do and say exactly what we want you to, and if you don't agree with what you want or we want you to, um, you know, then basically you're ostracized, you're kicked out. Yeah. I mean, this guy, this minister was, I'm uh, just pulling up the notes here. He was actually labeled uh, and reported to the watchdog uh, terrorism list. That's for insane. preaching a sermon and you can go on his name is uh bernard russell uh but bernard randall sorry um and you can see the full video for yourself and and you know what he spoke on and he was actually speaking on you know uh love your neighbor first and foremost he was talking about acceptance and tolerance even if you don't agree with something but also he was saying to them look why don't why can't we debate and see, you know, now, but personally, you've heard my feelings before about debating. I never debate with a fool. Um, you know, if there's something genuine to come out of it and you both want to look at both sides of the Rubik's Cube, then brilliant, because hopefully that leads to better understanding. Um, but to, to be put in this position, and there was a lady that caused, again, uh, on the governmental board, uh, so many troubles and so many things that were there. You know, he's been forced out of his job um, because of his views on identity policies. To me, it, I mean, I know some of the stuff that's going on in the United States right now because I speak to a lot of folks uh, week to week on all the things that are going on. And it's, it's concerning. It really is. And that's part of the reason, obviously, we're speaking about this today is because, you know, it only takes, you know, a few good people to do absolutely nothing for evil to reign. And when you've got stuff like this, it's like, I don't want my child, you know, I, I brought up some statistics and I... I don't want my child at two and three years old to have to go to a transgender identity clinic. That is happening. And statistically, there are 50, 50 children every single week that are admitted to these identity clinics. Um, and the normal age that people start changing their identity is between 13 and 15. Now, from a psychological point of view, there is so much more that's to do with this. Um, which again, you know, we will try and tackle next week um, before, obviously, without going into too much depth today. Um, but I think it's really important to be able to say, you know, actually, I don't agree with this. And this is why, because I don't want my child, you know, at five and six years old saying, Daddy, I want a sex change, you know, without understanding fully what that means. And you see people from a psychological point of view, and you're like, Hmm, something's really interesting here, especially around the transgender community. Um, so that, but like I said, that's something to, to look at, um, if, if you're willing, certainly for next week, I think that'll be a, an interesting one. Yeah. Folks, if, if you're watching this, you know, and you have views on this, try to stick to facts and figures, um, as opposed to just opinions, do feel free to get in touch with us, you know, because again, we're not mm -hmm. the fountain of all knowledge, we're coming at it from one point of view. And, um, but I just think when it's taught in schools at such an early age, you know, um, because the message that's coming out here is if you don't like being a girl or a boy, you can just change it. You know, you, you can change who you want. Well, of course, a child, you know, with the world of imagination is just going to be like, all right, OK, let, let's let's go ahead and do this. See what this would be like. And then the psychological problems that ensue from that is, uh, you know, basically when you're going through transgender, you are killing, you know, non literally, but you are killing the person that you were and you're becoming someone else. So. Have you any more thoughts about that before we move on? <laughs> a, a few. Um, I, I do. I do agree that at such a young age, you know, with that their imagination, it's it it doesn't it doesn't quite settle into exactly what that means. Mm -hmm. I think that if a kid does come to you with that, and we can talk about this more next week, there's a lot more a, you can do as a parent. Yeah. You can do as as a mentor to help them go through those feelings and emotions without this permanence yeah. attached you know I mean I feel like every girl goes through a tomboy phase I mean yeah. I went through a tomboy phase so it's like and and whether or not that sticks and stays or gets you know bigger or whatever it's you have to just let your kid kind of go through these cycles and I really think that that then plugs mm -hmm. right back into emotional intelligence yeah. emotional support education of like how do you deal with that that feeling and what does it mean and you know how do you go on from there um See, that's really interesting alicia sorry to cut you off there it's really no, interesting because over here the phrase tomboy is now um exiled it is not allowed really? in normal yeah it's not allowed in normal conversation within the school system because you know a tomboy nowadays means that the girl wants to become a boy 
and it's like this, this is literally what is is going on and this is what's being taught and the amount of operations that are taking place to change gender at such an early age is insane and you know that there was one of the the documents that i read that said we can't figure out why there's been such a spike since i think it was maybe 2013 2014 um with the amount of girls that are wanting uh, the gender change operation which is excruciatingly painful and again we'll mm -hmm. talk about that next week because you know you, you don't choose this lightly that's for sure um but when you look at it and you say okay is there a correlation between that and what's been taught in schools and believe it or not they may you know, they meet up and it's like well that's probably why because more and more people are being exposed to all of these different things uh, but like i said there's a lot that goes into that as well so yeah so for sure there's yeah there's definitely a lot and i and i think the last thing i'll say about it is um it almost <clears throat> it almost feels like there is this culture of like it, almost like if you're not yeah. lgbtq you're not cool yeah there's almost almost that feeling. i don't want to throw that out there i know it's a very loaded statement <laughs> I, I think well, that, that I feel certainly like there is a feeling is a over here as well that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I know as a 20 whatever person that even I feel that a little bit of like, mm -hmm. am I, am I being acceptive enough? Yeah. Am I, am I doing this enough? I can't even imagine what kids in their preteens their teen years and even yeah. earlier are feeling with this culture around us. Mm -hmm. But that's, it just goes right back into, we have to just educate yeah. more. Definitely. We're just not, we're, I feel like we're just like throwing things out there and not really giving the education behind it and then kids are basically left to figure it out on their own yeah and, which and I, with the internet involved that yeah, can be well, very that's what i was going to say it goes back to what we were saying about social media a couple of weeks ago it's a relatively new thing and now people need to figure out how the heck to use it and use it properly um so yeah, yeah for, for sure yeah a lot of um, things with that in mind, shall we just go straight into emotional intelligence? Yeah. I was going to say that for the end, but that's a great segue, actually. Okay, no, folks, so yeah. I, this, this past week, um, I have had a tremendous amount of fun studying um, emotional intelligence with the University of Yale, um, and uh, it, it's, been, it's been really awesome. Now, for some of you, maybe like, what the heck is emotional intelligence, John? Is this like, you know, way out CGI stuff? Is, is you know, what is it? Basically, emotional intelligence is the awareness of ourself and the awareness of others. Um, Alicia, how much do you know about emotional intelligence? Uh, just from what I can collect <laughs> from the name. <laughs> um, I, yeah, just like being aware of yourself, being aware of your emotions, your feelings. And then I, I would think it's almost how you react to those yes. feelings. Absolutely. Now, it's really interesting, actually, when you look at the correlation between parents because i know we we've talked about this a little bit we obviously never around this subject but when i learned about this i sat down with katie my wife and we examined her parents and then sat down with you know with, with my own family group and then sat down with laurie and her family group and her parents and the influences there and the emotional intelligence and the difference that it makes not only to the child not only to their development but also to their career to their future to everything else it is insane on how much this, and it doesn't mean that everything's perfect and everything's wonderful, but it really does make so much of a difference. It's really awesome. So emotional intelligence, folks, um, is uh, very similar to the traffic light system that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, but they have six points to it. Um, one of the things that they use a lot, though, is called the ruler system. So the ruler system is recognizing emotion in yourself and in others understanding the consequences of the emotions, labeling emotions accurately, expressing emotions appropriately, and regulating emotions effectively. So in other words, you're not flipping off the, the whole chart and everything because something doesn't go your way. Um, but Alicia, I'm interested to know your view, just from hearing that, do you think the people who had parents and teachers would go under the label of emotional intelligence actually did better or worse um than those that didn't um i i, I want to say yes yeah. um um because just from my own experience um from what i've seen from not only my own family but from my friends families i definitely i definitely think that there are the you know the special cases the people that you know manage to make it regardless of what their parents yeah. and their mentors and their teachers have taught them 
but I do think that it sets you up in a certain way that given your emotional intelligence Mm -hmm. depends on how you go in life like potentially you know if your parents brought you up a certain way but you're like you know I'm not going to do that I'm going to take my own path that can happen but I do feel like a lot of times however the emotional intelligence of is of your parents and your teachers that it's definitely going to be what you carry and grow up with absolutely (laughs) absolutely well here's the thing you know emotional intelligence of your parents means literally the difference between going through certain experiences and not so your parents fighting and punching and kicking each other are very low emotional intelligent people as opposed to you know those can that can actually sort their their issues out and things but you know it really is just incredible um when you look at people's social intelligence and the difference that it makes them because i i know certain schools around here and i know of other schools that are more private school where the intelligence is higher and the effects that it makes on the teenagers is, is these are just a few they're less likely to have severe anxiety problems they're less likely to experience um what, how, how can I phrase this? Uh, overuse of drugs and alcohol, and they're less likely to end up in prison if the emotional intelligence is higher. Again, it's the whole thing between nature and nurture. Um, mm-hmm. And the way that it works, exactly like Alicia was saying, exactly like we've talked before, is self evaluation. You know, how do you feel? But you also will know how the other people feel as well. In doing this, you're recognizing and labeling. Um, what causes you and the other person's feelings, you show an understanding. Um, How did the other person express their feelings, you know, and then what could you have done to handle the situation better? And what could you do now? And this is the beginning of emotional intelligence, where hopefully you and your family can work better. So have you any further thoughts about that before we move on? It was just a short thing for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's pretty much exactly how and I mentioned it a lot about my mom. I mean, she really, she really did I think, in my own personal opinion, do a great job raising us. I mean, we're all best friends with her now. Mm -hmm. Um, And those were the things that she went through with us of like, okay, that's, that's an okay emotion. But like, why are you feeling this way? How can it be better? You know, just literally exactly the steps that you walked through is what my mom went through with me. And I really feel like that has, I almost feel like I'm at the point where I'm like, an empath where mm-hmm. I can, yeah. where I, I, if somebody else is feeling a certain way in a room, I'm going to feel that too. And it's almost to my detriment sometimes <laughs> because I'm like, your vibes are just too much for me right now. But I'm aware, I'm aware yeah. of what other people are feeling. I'm aware of like vibes that people are giving off. Um, and yeah, it's just that emotional intelligence, being aware of, of other people as well as yourselves. And that's really awesome, you know, and you can see the difference that that's had on you. For me, a lot of, of what I went through, I had to figure out by myself, um, you know, and again, there's certain times where I was like, oh, I'm just feeling this way and behaving this way because to me it was normal. Although to the rest of the world, it's like, no, that's not normal. <laughs> you know, so you I have feel to figure like, a lot of stuff out. I feel like that is actually more common yeah. than than anything. I feel like I'm the oddity of it because like, I, I don't want to like just, talk for him but I do feel like my my yeah. boyfriend has dealt with the same mm-hmm. stuff where he's just like this is just how yep. I react yeah and it's because no one's really ever been there to be like no not okay you only know what you know it. yeah yeah exactly yeah and it is I mean it, it's it, it's crazy now because Katie and I was talking about this a little bit after um I'd finished with with Yale uh yesterday or whenever it was Saturday um and, and that was one of the things we said, you know, the expectation on the child now is that you're going to grow up normal, you're going to grow up fine or normal, um, whatever that looks like now. Um, <laughs> but you're going to have emotional intelligence when your parents are either away working or you're just left in front of the TV or whatever it might be. And that happens more and more. The family dynamic really isn't there as much as it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. It yeah. has all changed for sure. Um I have big feelings. <laughs> I'm interested. That. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, okay. I definitely feel like me and my, my younger sister, who's five years younger than me, I feel like we, from what I've seen, are like the last generation to go through this like quintessential, yeah. what I think of quintessential childhood that like I had, our parents had, our grandparents had of like, you know, hanging out with people and going outside and exploring and learning through doing 
And I just, you know, if you drive through a neighborhood now, you just don't see kids. Like you do see kids out, which thank goodness, but like, yeah. it's just not the same. There's this technology barrier. I mean, the technology barrier was there when I was a kid and my mom was very good about making cut end times of certain things. And the way that technology is now, and I see this in my cousins who are all under the age of eight, mm -hmm. um, they each have their own iPad. Yeah. Like I, I don't know if anybody remembers a leapfrog. Oh yeah. You remember the thing where yeah. you had the pen and the cartridge yeah. and you touch things. Yeah. That was like our iPad back in the day, but it was educational. And I just, yeah. I don't know how I feel about kids having their own technology yeah. devices. And I mean, cause I mean, parents are already like this, mm -hmm. ignoring kids. Now the kids are sitting there doing this. And then that's where you lose the family dynamic. That's where like together time is on your phone or iPad time. And it's like, where, where do we cut the phones off, hang out with each other, enjoy each other's presence. Cause like, I, I catch myself at times, like in family functions, I don't want to touch my phone. I don't want to be distracted by it. I want to put it away. And I'm glad that I at least have that kind of like yeah. understanding and knowledge to, to do that because family time is important. I just feel like there's this lack of appreciation, caring, you know, respect for, for the family dynamic and family time. So yeah. that's my rant. <laughs> I, I, and I completely agree with that. We're, we're very much the same on that principle. Um, because th there are times I find, honestly, when I've got too much screen time, it just drains my energy. Um, yeah. So these days, actually, I get on, I do my posting on social media, I do any business that I need to do, and then I, I switch off. There's maybe about three or four days of the week that I just do not switch on, apart from to check yeah. notifications, and that's it. Because, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I love where we live now. We can go for a walk. We're in the forest. You know, we've got lakes and ponds around us. Um, there's swans actually nesting and everything. And that's a really exciting time. But again, you know, it's great around here. That so many kids are going out to play. But it's concerning, actually, statistically, when you've got children, 11, 12, 13 years old, that are spending between 12 and 16 hours a day on a form of electronic device. And it ain't good for you, you know. Yeah. And, and and it, COVID is not... No. helping no. and there's a whole other concern about development yeah with young kids in school right now which Definitely. that's a whole other topic yeah, <laughs> and, and it is I mean but, but it's the whole thing as well of how kids are learning how kids are developing and uh, I think that's I think in the next 10 years at least if, if not sooner we are going to see a lot of different dynamic changes on the educational uh, system for sure so I completely agree and actually that's something that we could probably talk about because I yeah. do have some thoughts about the education system oh yes hmm. oh <laughs> that I do <laughs> <laughs> um but I think to our, I mean is there anything yeah. else you want to add because I kind I'm of have to go way so kind of tying into this emotional intelligence and this technology and kind of taking and transitioning into this taking time um one thing that you mentioned about screen time draining you, I challenge people to pay attention next time that you're on your phone for a long period of time, and then go hang out with a group of friends, your family, turn the phone off, don't touch it, and then just be aware of how you feel after yep. each of them. Because I know for me, when I, after I'm done hanging out with my family or even friends, I have this like dopamine rush where you're just like, you're great. You're feeling awesome. It's like the, the, your life is so perfect and awesome and great. And then it's not that same feeling yeah. when you get done on your phone. So I, I challenge people to do that. And, but that just segues really nicely into taking time for yourself. <laughs> and that is something I did this weekend. Um, John, I hope that you are able to do it soon, or if you haven't. <laughs> I, I have been doing. I, uh, I had a, a brief uh, health thing that went on, and whenever I have a health thing that goes on, I'm like, phone goes off unless I need to speak to people, and, you know, I just okay. stop. These days, it's great. I can just stop and don't worry. Yeah, that's actually something that not a lot of people do. If, if And I'm, you know what? I will say <laughs> maybe women, <laughs> when they get sick, they're like, we're just powering through. Let's just keep going. I, I used to do that. I was writing about that this way. I used to do that. I used to power through. It's an old school mentality. That yeah. you the doctor, unless your arm's falling off or unless yeah. you're decapitated, you know, and you keep powering through. And I did that to the point that I blacked out last year. Again. Oh my, my God. 
yeah. Oh, that's um, right. yeah. And uh, where I tore my midsection and I was just like, yeah, my butt needs to hit that sofa and it ain't moving for the next 48 hours. And that's what I did. And uh, yeah. it, it does so good to have such a recharge because when you're giving so much of yourself out, you must take time for yourself. So it's really yeah. important. I, so I know that I've understood this about myself. I feel like not everybody's like this, but I look at my energy level, obviously as like a battery, literal yeah. battery. And yeah, when you're giving yourself out, and even when you're just out working or being with people, your battery is going to drain. And it is so important to give yourself recharge time. And I personally think that that should be alone time. I mean, you can have a significant other, but it really needs to be like just you just focusing on resting, building your energy back up. Because if you hit zero, I mean, you're going to black out and it, that's you don't want to get to that point i i've actually reached near that point before where i just keep going keep going keep going because you're like things just have to happen but you, things aren't going to happen if you hit zero and you end up blacking out or other health issues happen or whatever it is it's so important to give yourself time and i feel like i don't know how it is over there but i know here in the states there's this go, 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 go mentality of like, don't stop, keep, keep hustling, keep working hard. And it almost feels like if, and I, I actually was dealing with this last week where if you give yourself time to do what you want to do, it's almost like there's this little voice in the back of your head going, you're not doing enough. You're, you take, you're being selfish. You're, you're not doing what you need to do for your life. And I know for me, Eve, when I'm sitting in my my me time, my like recharge time, I still have that voice that is nagging me of like, you should be doing something. You're not doing anything. Yeah. You need to be doing something. And my, my struggle right now is to shut that voice off for a little bit of time, just like learn to relax and then jump back into everything when you're ready to do it. That's what I did this weekend. I, I was on my phone a little bit and I really tried to just enjoy the moment and something my boyfriend says all the time and I completely agree with him is he's like you know taking photos and videos is fun and great he's like but I love that I have some memories that are just in my head that are just mine that nobody else knows them they're just mine and I'm like you know that's a really amazing and intense idea of just having a memory between you and yourself or you and somebody else um so yeah I guess I challenge people to do that too next time you're out just like try not to take all the photos <laughs> But that's and the it, way it, it used to be like 20 years ago, it would be you and yourself and away with nature in a mountaintop or a lake or wherever it was. But now we feel the need to share every single thing that goes on with our lives. Alicia, I, I have a confession to make, actually. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> because, yes, I do like taking time. There's no doubt about that. However, when I when my body kind of feels like, oh, I've, I've taken enough time, I get really fidgety and I get sort yeah. of grumpy. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily from... So last Thursday, because my, my week had been completely here, there and everywhere, and I took Wednesday, Thursday off, or that at least was the plan. Uh, there was a few things I needed to take care of on Wednesday, and then Thursday morning came and I thought, oh, you know, I'm feeling more energetic. And I didn't realize that I had this flare up of colitis that was sucking the energy out of me. So I, we, Katie and I finished up having breakfast and I looked outside the back window and I'm like, you know how we've been talking about moving this shed? And... Uh, yeah, I, and I was like, well, I've got today free and I'm feeling full of energy. Um, so I think today I'm going to move the shed. And the shed, you know, is, is a decent size. It's like a seven foot by, I don't know, four foot shed full of stuff that's in there. It's drilled into the ground. It's a heavy thing as well. And we literally just moved the shed, you know. But I, I felt it the, the, the next couple of days. And I was like, oh, boy, I, it's actually taken more out of me than I thought it was. But the, the reason that I bring this up, actually, is as a follow on from. Um, so to, for, for, before I move on from that, moving a shed when it's your day off is not the ideal thing to do. <laughs> just throw that out there. Although it's done and the garden now looks absolutely humongous. It's really <laughs> awesome. I have to say, I'm really, really thrilled with it. But there are a lot of life coaches out there. And I was writing about this this morning. Um, there's a lot of life coaches out there, a lot of um, entrepreneurs that are out there that see the mentality, exactly what you described, that you've got to keep on going. You've got to keep fighting forward. You've got to keep, you know, doing whatever it might be. You've enough time to sleep when you're dead. And, and 
you know, the problem is these guys have a lot of followers. And I mean, insane amounts of followers. But I, I obviously tend to adopt the, uh, the principle of balance is key and everything in balance. And it's important to be as you know, central as you can. And someone said to me, it's like, yeah, but, you know, so-and-so is, and I'm not going to mention any names. You can go and Google them. There's enough of them. Um, you know, don't, don't want to slander anybody, but you know who I'm talking about. Um, but the fact they say, you know, but so-and-so is doing so well. And I'm like, they look like they've been on methadone or crack cocaine for 10 years because their skin is so pale because they have only slept sometimes for 20 minutes a night. Now, from a here's is the most psychological point of view the reason we need sleep people have asked that for thousands of years the reason is because when we sleep our body flood or, or our brains flood our body with i guess you could say you know, healing energies or chemicals that basically restore your body so that's sometimes when you wake up the next day and you feel less sore than what you did after you moved the shed um, but not quite fully restored it's because your body is still repairing itself. And that's what the brain does. Now, if you only sleep for 20, 20 minutes a night, then your body is not going to restore itself enough. So anybody that says to me, and I don't care if it's an entrepreneur, business person, I don't care how much money they've made. When they look into my eyes and they've got severe bags under their eyes and they're burning the candle at both ends and their skin is so pale that you're like, you've either been taking something illegal or there's something seriously wrong with you. Um, and I'm meant to take advice from you. You know, I've yeah. got my own criteria of people that are, are what I look for. But, you know, it is it is so important of taking time out, as you found. Because, I, I mean, how do you feel now compared to where you were, you know, last week? So it's funny that you mentioned, like, moving your shed on your day off. Um, because physically, I feel exhausted because we were walking everywhere. Oh, Emotionally, mentally, I feel great. I feel rested recharged so it's just the physics it's that balance of like physical and, and mental rest um yeah. but yeah no I definitely feel mentally better than last week but physically I'm a little rough my legs are hurting a little in, in, in my defense I didn't realize the job with the shed was going to be as big as it took <laughs> it only took four hours to do it, it took half an hour to empty everything out and then three hours to take the screws out of the, the ground <laughs> where it had been drilled in and then to put everything away and to do all that kind of stuff. And then I just sat there. I was just, I was filthy. Um, and Katie had to go and teach afterwards and she'd helped. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it was an experience. Um, but it's That's, done. I mean, yeah, the hey, got something done. I mean, for me, I know that like, if I get something that I need to get done, done, it's for me, it's that checkbox. So yeah. like, it's done. Don't got to worry about it. That's nice for me. But yeah, it's, it's again, that balance of like, yeah finding and actually that was something I wanted to talk to about in a, maybe in the next couple episodes um is really trying to find balance in everything because I do feel like I struggle with balance I am either one extreme or the other and I have a really hard time finding the happy medium and maybe that's something that you can help me with because I I really struggle I am like I'm one extreme or the other <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are like that I believe I'm writing a book on the subject so yes absolutely. oh wonderful yeah it's so called wonderful. Is key um and uh, it talks about actually I was writing this morning about what happens when we're out of balance and uh, everything every case study that's in there is a true life story and some of these case studies you would literally think this had to be like a soap opera or made up or whatnot no these actually happened these are 100 real um and uh as I've said before, you know, people when they get out of balance or their needs aren't being met are literally capable of some of the most insane behaviors on the face of the planet. It is insane. I'm sure. Just some I can't wait to read this. This yeah, is uh, it, it, got my interest peaked. It's going to be good fun um, for sure. And some of the behaviors that people go through. But actually, when we're talking about, have you anything that you want to say before we move on regarding the importance of taking time out? No, I think I got everything out. <laughs> I ranted enough. <laughs> Sometimes it's good. We love doing this show because it gives us an opportunity just to let all this stuff out. And, you know, we, yeah. we know there's a lot of people that's out there. But I want to kind of segue into um, a little topic that really caught my attention this past week. And it's not waiting for permission before you do something. Alicia, and, and again, obviously, because we're both creative minds, and I don't know necessarily that we will struggle with this. Um, I certainly don't now. But have you ever been in a situation where you felt this is the, the direction that I'm going to go in. This is what I need to do. But there was something in your mind where you felt like I need permission 
to do this. Maybe even it's taking time out. Have you ever felt that before? Always. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I actually feel, I actually do both. Sometimes I'm like, screw permission. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. And then other times I'm like, I call my mom, I call my boyfriend. I call literally everybody under the sun to be like, should I do this? Like, is this, should, should I do this? So yes. <laughs> oh, so the, the funny thing is, I mean, some people actually need, um, permission to take days off like they always like you were saying you know they always feel like they need to be go 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 um i have a friend of mine that will message at least once a month so, you know and the conversation conversation always always ends up getting towards the point of can i take permission or, or can i get permission to take a day off it's like yeah sure it's your life you know yeah <laughs> do what you I, do i honestly do i like literally right before i quit my job I mean, obviously I was miserable, but I would text my mom every morning. I'm like, I'm like, do, can I, do I have to be an adult today or can I take the day off? <laughs> it's like, I mean, obviously I was going to a bit of extreme, but like, yeah. I would do that at times. It'd be like, like, here's the situation, mom. Like, do you, what do you think? Like, should I, can I afford this day off? Because mm. that's the other thing too, especially when it comes to days off yeah. in a workplace, like you are allotted so much, which mm -hmm. I have big feelings on that as well. It's different over here. Yes, and I hate it that we are just oh so stupid here. See, that's but it's interesting feeling. you say that because <laughs> another topic for another thing is about uh, companies, and I, I would love to work with certain organizations if I'm honest with you, because I think they need to learn how to manage their staff, like really, really manage their staff. Yeah. Um, I worked for an organization, thankfully now that is defunct. Um, but they literally would bully their staff and then wonder why, you know, results weren't happening, why sales calls are dropped. It's like, yeah. well, because you made you, you made your uh, sales team feel like garbage, of which I was a part of. Um, and when you take the confidence out of your sales team, then, you know, you, you ain't going to do anything good. Um, but the reason that I bring that topic up is because a lot of people do feel that they need to have permission before they do anything. And, you know, we're, we're always, you know, when you need to have um, affirmation from other people that it's okay to do something, you're going to be waiting a very, very long time. You know, you, you're going to be stuck. You need to decide for yourself. And we're talking about the general audience, of course. I'm not just pointing at Alicia here <laughs> who's going at this. But, you know, <laughs> we need to decide for ourselves that, hey, this is the course of action I want to take. This is what I want to do. Rather than sitting there saying, well, is it all right for me to do this? Is it not? I used to go through that when I was going through um, further education. Is it okay for me to start studying at 30 odd years old? Well, of course it is. I made the decision. You know, it, it's my body, my choice kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for, for folks just, just to think about a little bit more that you have the all the abilities you ever will need and you need to be able to take the decision to say, look, I give myself permission to have a day off. I give myself permission if I want to move that shed. You know, I give myself permission if I just want to chill and, and do whatever I need to do. And again, it's the whole thing in balance. It all works together. When we're out of balance, it really affects our energies. When we're in balance, things, believe it or not, just flow in a much more natural, uh, a natural way. So it was just a, a small thing, folks, as I say, you know, sometimes when you're waiting for, mission, for permission from other people, you'll be waiting for a long time. Um, yeah. But give yourself permission, for sure. Yeah. The one thing I do want to add to this, and this is just actually one of my own stories, um, which now looking at it, I'm like, maybe I need to be more like that again. Um, when I was young, when I was like preteens, teenagers, I, I was very, my mom will say this a million times over. She's like, you're very strong minded. You knew what you wanted and you would go after it and no one could get in your way. And to some extent, I am still like that. But like just a situation that pops in my head is like when I was I don't know, I was maybe 13, 14. And I wanted to hang stuff up on my wall, but I needed like the anchor that goes uh -huh. on the wall and like screw it and everything. And I went to my dad and I'm like, hey, can you help me do this? Can you just like show me how to do it so that I can do it myself? And he's, he would always be like, cause he was working from home and he's like, oh, I'll show you after work. I'll show you after work. And I'm like, that timeline doesn't work for me. I'm going to go figure it out. <laughs> and so I actually, I did figure it out. I gave myself permission. I did the thing. Um, and I, I don't think I do that anymore. I don't think I, I just say, you know, screw it. I'm just going to do it. I, I do feel like as you maybe get older, a little bit of that, like, you feel like you can do whatever you can mm -hmm. goes away. It's that inv invincibility thing that you feel as a kid that definitely goes away. But 
I do think that sometimes you just need to go for it. You just need to do it. I completely agree. I mean, I was just making some notes there that, you know, a lot of the time you can be, you know, doing these things and, and not having a clue, you know, what you're doing. When I start a business, like, 20 years ago, um, I was figuring out as I went along, I mean, I was a teenager, you know, and I'm figuring out as I went along, and there were certain things that I did that was just like, okay, that's uh, different. Um, there were other things that I did that I was like, oh, I probably wouldn't do that now. You <laughs> yeah. the lesson and you move on. But I yeah. agree, and and the, the note that I made, um, when, when teenagers get older, when we all get older, I think, you know, life can knock the confidence out of us a little bit. And that stops us, you know, we get to a point where, especially if you've had to struggle, you know, we get to a point where we're like, right, I've, I've bought my house now, or I've, I've got my apartment, I've got my, my marriage, and I've got all the other stuff. And we almost stop taking risks. We also, you, you we almost just get complacent and comfortable because it's very complacent, you know, and, and a very great place to be when you're in comfort. But again, mm -hmm. we weren't designed to be there. And sometimes, you know, having that uncertainty, having that risk, it's good for us. It's almost like an adventure. Um, yeah. And it's difficult, you know, when, when you've gone through those, you know, sometimes horrific experiences um, to then want to get up and say, you know, I, I want to, you know, risk it all again to, you know, to, to do whatever it might be, um, you know, and, and even for me, you know, working in the, the line of work that I'm in now, I'm like, do I really want to go back into this? And I'm like, there's a heck of a need there. And it's important to, you know, to, to be uh, willing to do that. Um, but yeah, sometimes your confidence can get knocked and the only way that it's going to get any better is when you start trying it again. It's like falling yeah. off your bike and yeah, it well. Exactly. <laughs> any further thoughts that you have for, uh, for that? No, I was just making a note on uh, a different topic I want to talk about later. So. Oh, sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we're just about done. Today was kind of a yeah. short, short show. We got a lot packed in for sure. And um, have you anything that you want to say before we wrap up for today's show? Uh, not much. Just, you know, remember those challenges I threw out at you guys. Take time for yourself. Turn the phone off every once in a while. Pay attention to how you are feeling. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. And it, it, is, it is important, folks, um, that if you aren't paying attention to how you feel, your emotional intelligence is going to be low. And when you start paying attention to obviously how you're feeling, then you can really gauge and it will be such a knock on effect on so many other people as well, because they'll actually start liking be around you as opposed to, oh my goodness, he or she's going to flip again, because you don't know how to connect with this emotional intelligence. And we'll put all sorts of graphics up for you and, and all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> Well, folks, I think we're just about out of time for today. We've covered everything that we're going to cover. Do join us next week. We're going to be talking about LGBT inside of schools and educational boards. Uh, and probably, who knows where that one's going to go? Mm -hmm. Because Alicia and I, we've got a, a number of uh, different areas to research in this next week. If you've got questions and comments that you want to put in, please do feel free and uh, we'll try and address them on the show. Don't forget to come and visit us, obviously, if you're interested in uh, personal coaching and uh, all the different products and all the courses and everything which you can check out at thebattleswealthface.com. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend because it could be the very thing that helps them in their hour of need. And aside from that, she has been the awesome Alicia Madonna. And I have been your host, Joe Morris. And we will see you next time. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you soon. Bye.